Um, whenever I learn about or hear about a journalist who has died or has suffered harm in, in the course of their work, it uh, makes me pause and reflect about why it is that I am a journalist. What's the reason I do this? Um, so in an effort to address that question and address some of the issues that have been highlighted as uh, the topics of this, of this event, I will uh, share with you a story um, of a story that I did. Because uh, journalists, one of the things we like doing once we finish writing the story, the public gets to consume the final product, whether it's on television, radio, or in print, or um, online. But there's always a story behind how that story came to be. Um, so I'll share with you one story behind the story. Um, it's based in the Comoros Islands, uh, which is in the Indian Ocean uh, on the, off the East, Eastern Africa coast. And uh, I pursued the story there because at the time I was working for the Associated Press, AP, the news agency, and I was sent there to cover a plane crash. Um, my boss called me at about three, three o'clock in the morning and said, uh, young man, uh, there's been a plane crash. Uh, you're on the six o'clock flight, so uh, come to the office, collect your money, and head off to the airport. Um, and I ended up uh, covering this plane crash for, I think, about seven days or so. Now, the reason I'm sharing this story is because I was reminded of it more recently, because the sole survivor is now a 20-year-old woman. Um, when the plane crash happened, she was 13, year 13 years old. Uh, she was flying from France to the Comoros Islands with her mother to visit relatives. And she, she's called uh, Bahia Bakari. I've never met her in the sense that we, when I saw her, she was, in hosp she was hospitalized, so we obviously couldn't see her, and she was young. Um, but I know her story in this way. In the, in the days that I spent in the Comoros Islands, I read a newspaper article where a police officer said that he had rescued her because this was a story that we were pursuing. Once we discovered that there was only one survivor, we identified where the survivor was, then the next thing was, so how did she end up surviving, who rescued her, that sort of thing, the human interest angle. But the newspaper story was a very short story, didn't have much detail in it, so I said, okay, let me go to, this poli to the nearest police station, ask, um, you know, whether they know this police officer and uh, whether I can talk to the police officer and find out details of this story. Um, got to the police station. There was a big debate uh, in the police station, uh, which surprised me because uh, my experience as a Kenyan citizen in a police station, the police did not debate with citizens. Um, and there was a back and forth discussion. It was in Creole, I was speaking to them in French. But then eventually they showed me the officer. The officer was in a car somewhere, so I went to talk to him. I asked him, uh, you know, so can you share with me details? You know, how did, how did you know to go there? How did you end up finding this person? He was very uh, vague with details. But then eventually he did tell me there was no Coast Guard in uh, the Comoros Islands. So he had to uh, be uh, seek the assistance of one of the cargo ships, one of the small fishing boats, cargo ships uh, in the harbor to go out and uh, rescue and look for survivors. So he pointed me towards the ship. So I went to the ship. And now when I spoke to the ship's captain, he said, no, 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 no. The, the, the police officer was not involved. In fact, he wasn't even on this ship. And he narrated to me the story that uh, how basically once, once the people on the island heard about the plane crash and realized that there's a need to do a search and rescue mission, all available ships, small boats, big boats, medium-sized boats, fishermen, uh, merchants, whatever, they just went out, wherever. And it so happens that on this particular ship, there was one of the sailors who had training in uh, rescuing people at sea. So this is the individual who actually, once they saw someone who looked like a possible survivor, he's the one who dove into the, into, into the ocean, because this was in June, roughly around the, at the start of the monsoon, so the, the waters were not exactly um, 
uh, they, 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 they were quite turbulent um, and rescued uh, uh, Bahia Bakari. So for me, why I share this story, why after uh, recently Bahia Bakari was uh, interviewed on BBC, um, it affirmed for me the work that I do. Why? The police officer, government official, had his truth, and the truth was that he's the one who saved the sole survivor of this plane crash that captured uh, the imagination and the collective grief of this uh, uh, archipelago. Why did he do this? I think his motive was, like government officials do at times, is they want to be congratulated, they want to be patted on the back, they want the approval of the public. Was it dishonest? Obviously it was dishonest, but that was his truth. Um, and government officials are human beings like the rest of us, and we all seek approval. Uh, whether through positive means or negative means, we do seek approval. Then there's the truth of these uh, sailors who, without much thought in terms of, do we have the right equipment? Are we properly trained? What is the procedure? They just go out and search for survivors wherever they may find them. And that is their truth. And then there is my truth as a journalist, which was, what is the story? And follow the story wherever it takes you. And, you know, ask who, what, where, when, how. And as you ask these questions and persist in asking these questions, you will get to layers of truth and you will get closer to what is the actual story that you're trying to cover. And finally, covering a plane crash is, of course, a very depressing thing. It's not easy. Um, you're talking to families who are anxious to find out news of their loved ones. And a story like this, at the time when I wrote it, was a positive story for me because this was an example of humanity at work, humanity affirming humanity. And then it, was, it made it easier for me to continue my work covering the grief and uh, the anxiety that I was covering. And for me, for the journalists here, I'm sharing this in order to affirm the work that you do. Uh, at times we don't have that affirmation, or at times we ask ourselves, why is it that we're doing what you're doing? You're not sure whether the story you're writing is actually important or not. Uh, each and every story is important. And for the audience here who are not necessarily journalists, you're all human beings, every small act of humanity that you do, wherever it is that you are, affirms us and is a positive way of moving the human race forward. Thank you very much. <laughs>